I am Dr. Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It is my pleasure to welcome you to Clearly, our show on DCTV 23 that has the purpose of bringing information to you about county departments, programs, and people. Information is essential to being able to think clearly. For this episode of Clearly, I would like to highlight the internship program for the Douglas County Board of Commissioners. It's a program I developed for the youth in Douglas County to learn how local government is run. Joining us today is my intern, Gar Gabriela Castro, and her parents, Mr. and Mrs. Jose and Janet Castro. Thank you for joining me today. Oh, thanks for yeah, having thanks us. Thanks for having us. Again. Wow, it's so exciting for y'all to be here. As you know, uh, Gabriella is my intern, and I chose her based on some things that I read on her resume uh, academically and also just some things that she's done in her lifetime. Uh, she's rather young, but she's done quite a bit, and I was quite impressed, so that's why I selected you to be, to be my intern. You have inspired so many uh, of us in the organization, believe it or not, uh, the, uh, especially the judicial side, because you've had an opportunity to rotate in various areas, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But can you just tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, Gabriella, and just tell the public about yourself here in Douglas County. I'm so excited to have you as my intern. Yeah, um, so my name is Gabriella. Um, I just graduated from Gonzaga University in Washington State. Um, there I studied political science and philosophy, um, and it, within philosophy concentrated in ethics. So, but I mean, all along government has been really an interest of mine, a passion of mine. Um, all through high school I debated um, public policy, public forum, um, did various debates that propelled that interest. And yeah, I'm so lucky to be here um, to have this opportunity. It's very exciting. Question for you. How has your experience been so far? Have you enjoyed yourself? And can you tell us a little bit about some of the various areas you've transitioned through since you've been here in this a month or so? Tell me yeah, it's been it. it's been amazing, honestly. Um, uh, an experience that like I couldn't have even imagined as far as um, exposure to different areas. Um, so the chairman has uh, blessed me with the opportunity to uh, engage in several different areas of the law. Um, because I will be attending law school soon. Um, so I, I have been able to work in the, uh, let's see, what else? Oh, I started in the Solicitor General's office, yes. um, so prosecuting misdemeanors. Um, and then I moved over to the Public Defender's office, which was wonderful. And then um, lately I've been working with the District Attorney's office. So getting exposure to these different trial uh, court levels and um, the different courtrooms, the judges, all that kind of stuff has been really fantastic. Wow, would you recommend this uh experience for any other students coming behind you or some interns for the future? Yeah, absolutely. I think that the ability for the internship to be flexible is, is a really unique kind of characteristic. You don't get that everywhere. Um, for example, uh, maybe as you know, Justin, whose background is in finance, has been able to work in the finance sector, um, doing um, work for the pub future public census. Um, and then Ruben, whose background is also in political science and hopes to be a politician one day, <laughs> his, um, his focus, he worked with the election, the Board of Elections, and so got to kind of work on a, an election that was happening in the county. So it's been really great as far as flexibility um, and exposure to different things. We also got to like tour the jail, um, which was an interesting um, experience and uh, enlightening, especially for me um, with my future in the legal field. Wow. Mr. and Mrs. Castro, I know you're very, very proud of mm -hmm. Gabriella. She's yep. just done a great job and just just everything she's done. I, I know she stands on the shoulders of mom and dad, so that's why I wanted you here. So you could uh, help me tout how great your baby is and, and what she's going to do in her future endeavors. Uh, Mrs., Mrs. Castro, tell me a little bit about uh, Gabrielle as she was coming up and what kind of child was she? Oh boy, <laughs> she was a handful. <laughs> we have two boys that are older than her and they were super easy. She was always, you always had to stay on top of her, but she was a great student. 
She loved to read. I started reading to her when she was a baby, and she was reading at a really early age, and she loved to read, and I think that's really important in a kid growing up. Um, she read so much that I would have to yell at her to put the book down and go outside and play <laughs> because she would love to read. Mm -hmm. And when she was little, she started writing her own stories, and she loved to write. And she was just a great student. She loved school, which was really weird because I hated school. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but she loved school. She would never miss a day of school. She wow. could be sick as a dog, and she would want to go to school. And be there. Yep, and be there. And she was a really good student. Wow. And she loved to argue. And so we thought, and she loved to talk. So we thought she would be a good lawyer. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. And that's what she wanted to pursue. <laughs> and here it is. And here she's, it is. She's yep. headed off to Coming Pepperdine. Coming to fruition. Dad, Mr. Jose Castro, tell me, well, first of all, thank you for your service. Oh, uh, you're, you're welcome. Veteran. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about, I said, you know, being a uh, military uh, father, I understand I'm a military former spouse served 19 if it's 20 years in the Marine Corps, so I know with that comes structure. Tell me a little bit about how you, the rearing process for Gabriella and how she uh, is becoming the young woman that she is today. Tell me what did you do, your impact. So, so yeah, the, um, you know, all of my kids benefited from, from uh, a lot of uh, tough love, um, <laughs> a very strict um, household. And, uh, yes. and, you know, I'm proud of all my kids, you know, uh, both my sons have been very successful as well. And I kind of feel like, um, you know, the, they, they, they kind of fell into line. They all had their separate personalities and you yes. had to deal with that, um, each child differently. But, um, but really, you know, we had, um, you know, we had family time. Uh, we, uh, we were blessed with the ability to almost every night sit down to supper together. Yes, um, during that time was, um, was when we kind of allowed a lot more free conversation, a lot more. I always told them, I said, look, I said, you can, we can talk about anything. We can act up in the house. Mm -hmm. but, but, but when you go out into the public, when you go out and you, you are representing me. That's right. And, that, and, you, and you must act like that and so we would have some fierce debates um, at the dinner uh -huh. table and uh -huh. get pretty rowdy but when it was all said and done everybody would be tucked in at night at the pretty much the same time every night um, pretty strict with Gabriella especially maybe more so than the boys on um, uh, going out at night and things like that but um, but she had quite a bit of freedom um, uh, as long as we kind of knew where she was so it was good and um, Everyone did well under it, and uh, um, yeah. Okay. What branch of service did you serve in? What branch? I was in the, the, the U.S. Army. The Ar Army as yeah. well. I served as well in the Army. Okay. Yeah, and I was, uh, I was in the Special Forces. S special Forces. Thank you again for your amazing service. Gabriella, a little bit. Tell me a little bit about you. I'm, I'm pivoting back to you. Um, I know you had a great uh, experience so far and uh, t tell me a little bit about your county government experience uh, with the Board of Commissioners. You ha had an opportunity to uh, sit in on work sessions and also our Board of Commissioner meetings. Can you just give me an idea of what you feel or how you feel about those meetings or your interpretation of what we're doing here in uh, county government? Yeah, um, it's, been, it's been really cool. So I had um, kind of a different experience when um, I worked for five months in Washington, D.C. Um, doing kind of the federal side and the mm -hmm. lobbying side um, uh, with Congress um, through a, a corporate law and lobbying firm. And um, it's been really great to see kind of how that type of law is carried out at the local level. Um, I think that obviously people don't really think about this that often, but county government is the most important government. It has the most direct impact on you. Um, for example, some of the things that you've done, like bringing the local bus system, like that's going to have a huge impact on certain people's day-to-day -day lives, and um, that happens at the county level. So it's been really great to sit on your sit in on your meetings, um, hear how important and like how hard y'all fight over budgeting and um, <laughs> all these things that um, the average everyday person doesn't think about that often, but are really really vital to their happiness and to their livelihood. Um, so yeah, it's been really really interesting, you know wrote a memo for you on a session, um, kind of doing some research outside of those sessions and um, really getting to understand the intrinsic workings of the system. Yeah, it's been really cool. 
take you, and then a little later I'm going to ask you a little bit about the booklet that you're working on for the, I believe, the DA's office mm -hmm. that will be published and it be, will be distributed throughout the county, but you'll talk about that piece okay. in a minute, and I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm going to pivot back to Mr. and Mrs. Uh, Castro a little bit. What do you recommend for parents in terms of success for their children? You know, today is, it takes a village to raise a family. If you had to give some advice, and it sounds like all three of your babies are successful, <laughs> and I'm assuming uh, Gabriella falls on the birth order of, is she the baby? Yep. She's my the baby. baby. The baby. Yeah. Yep. The princess. Uh, yeah, Florida the, the queen. princess. Yes. Yeah, so. Queenie. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what advice would you give uh, uh, parents today in raising their children to get to the point of success? And I'll start with you, Mr. Castro. You look like you're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I heard we have special lots, forces. We have lots of advice. <laughs> yeah, my dad was a paratrooper <laughs> in the Korean War, so special <laughs> forces mean you all got some law and order. Tell me what you do with that. Right. Well, and I, and I think that's some of it. You know, set, uh, uh, early on we set a lot of boundaries, and, and you know, we, but we wanted the, the children and, um, to be exposed to a lot of things, so we did expose them to a lot of things. Um, my, my job allows me to travel quite a bit, so the, the children have had an opportunity to see quite a bit of, of the United States um, and even some world travel. And so exposing them to that, we've exposed them to the outdoors. They all have a love and passion for the outdoors, so they mm -hmm. care about the environment, especially Gabriella. She seems to really uh, focus on, on that, and um, she's kind of chip off the old block when it comes to that stuff. And, um, and, and a lot of it is, is really a lot of love. And I think it's, you know, like you said, the village is a good analogy because um, um, uh, Janet has a very large extended family. Yes. So um, all the kids have been exposed to a really, really big family with a lot of love and a lot of, uh, a lot of caring. And there's a lot of, um, I'll call it friendly competition <laughs> amongst all the children. Uh -huh. And yes. uh, Gabriella friendly, being huh? the baby, she's <laughs> actually, you know, the... She, you know, the, the, the two boys, my two sons, have set fairly high bars okay. for success, and she's already kind of almost leaped over the first one. And, oh, and, ouch. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so it's kind of interesting, you know, grades-wise, you know, her grade point average is better than the other two boys. It's a really interesting little of competition amongst themselves. And, and, uh, and then really, I think a lot of it, I, I, I have to give a lot of credit to, to Janet, because mm -hmm. uh, she really has uh, carried a lot of the load because um, I work a lot. Yes. Well, Janet, got a question for you, Mrs. Yeah. Castro. When the letter came or the, the notification that uh, Gabriella was accepted in Pepperdine, tell me what you felt. I know as a mother, you know, I just scream and just go overboard when good things happen to my child. Well, tell me what happened uh, for my child. After four years of paying for Gonzaga, <laughs> <laughs> we were overwhelmed. Uh, Gabby got a, a really good scholarship to go to Gonzaga, and that was one of the reasons why she chose that campus. Yes. Um, and we told her we would help her out with her first four years. We said, we'll pay for your wedding, we'll help you pay for school your first four years, or you go to, because she could have gone to Wyoming University for free yeah. for her first four years, but she chose to go to a different school. Um, and Or we said if, if you went to Wyoming, we'd help you pay for graduate school. Mm -hmm. And so she chose, she chose us helping her with the first four years. And so when she started applying for law schools, we told her she was totally on her own. So she was thinking of different ways to pay for school so when she graduated she wouldn't have a large debt right. and she started getting some really good offers um, I think she applied to nine law schools wow. and right off the bat she got accepted to seven and wow. she got That's a amazing. couple of full rides at different schools but Pepperdine came in with the best offer and she really liked California and Malibu. I think she was ready for some sun and warmth from Washington State. And so when she told us, we were like over the moon. We couldn't believe she got such a good scholarship for it. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. Um, Gabriella, my first cousin, she, we look like twins. She lives, <laughs> we look like twins. She live in Malibu, so I'll make sure you have uh, a telephone number yeah. so she can say hello to you. She's a Thanks. nurse out there in, in Malibu, California, and her and her husband live there. Very cool, so yeah, I know how to she, So she's my twin, so <laughs> you could just, she's my first cousin. I would love for her to meet you, so I'll make sure you have that information when you go. Now let's talk about 
the booklet that you're going to produce for the uh, for the county, or uh, under, I believe it's under the DA's office. A little, if you could just tell us about what you, what you're doing. Yeah. So the pamphlet is uh, technically brought by the Solicitor General and the DA. So the prosecutors yes. in general, um, bringing forth this pamphlet on the um, accountability courts, um, as well as the record restoration and the pretrial diversion programs. So basically, the uh, the pamphlet involved me um, kind of doing some research, talking to the heads of um, the drug courts um, in the Hope Court, which is a an accountability court that, uh, I'm trying to explain it really simply, um, takes basically takes people that are career criminals, so not their first offense, yes. um, repeat offenders, and it tries to intervene in that process. Mm -hmm. um, so it takes these, these people and it puts them in a court system that is built around structure, but also support um, so getting them with a counselor, um, still still probation, still being held accountable for their actions, but in a way that um, supports their their growth and supports their getting better. Um, and so this system, it's been great to research it because the recidivism rates of people within this program are ridiculously low. Like you're talking about less than, like over 90% of them do not reoffend. So it means it's keeping the streets safe, um, it's improving lives, it's benefiting the economy, it's benefiting the county because these people are in jail. Mm -hmm. um, so the list goes on and on of the benefits, but I've been able to do that, do that research, you know, have some meetings with people, um, collect all that information, um, create graphs, create summary, and basically compile this pamphlet that will be distributable to the community. Um, first of all, you know, trying to get people into the program that should be in the program, mm -hmm. um, as well as informing people of their options um, if they already have been prosecuted. So, for example, if you're, you know, if you were, is your first felony and you didn't apply for first offender status, but mm -hmm. you met all of the requirements of your plea deal, um, you can come back and get that removed from your record, for example. So, it's just an informational pamphlet targeted at the community. Um, and uh, yeah, I've, I've had the pleasure of getting to compile that information, so. Okay. That's, that's huge for the solicitor's office and the DA's office. Yeah. I've been touting your work, and I just wanted to make sure that the <laughs> citizens of Douglas County know which, your contribution yes. this summer just uh, in this small stint of time during your internship. So, you know, we in our dialogues, we have a debriefing every day uh, for her intern. Some days we miss a few, but uh, we sit down and chat about her experiences, and I believe you're experienced, and you said you love the Public Defendant's Office. Can you tell me why and why you were just drawn to Public Defendant and why you would perhaps one day, I guess, pursue that uh, avenue in your career? Yeah, so honestly, before this experience and before you um, have given me this opportunity to kind of test out the waters in these different areas, I really didn't see myself being a trial attorney. So <laughs> um, this, is, this has been great because after I worked with the Public Defender's Office, um, first of all, why I liked it, um, the people there are just great people. Like you don't become a public defender because you make a lot of money. You don't become a public defender um, because it's particularly glamorous as far as type types of law goes. You do it because you care about people and you care about the system as a whole. Um, I really liked it because I think that the public defender is kind of this like last line of defense between um, the law and a person's freedom. So mm -hmm. like their role is absolutely imperative um, in a system that, I mean, it's obviously targeting these people. They committed crimes, and I truly do believe they deserve to um, own up to that crime, but the de uh, defense attorney, and specifically public defendants, um, are that last step. Um, they ensure that the system is being carried out correctly. They ensure that there, no one's rights are getting abridged within the process of prosecution. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody down there is so passionate about what they do, so passionate about um, giving people a second chance, about ensuring that if people are prosecuted, it's for a reason and it's going to benefit society and not harm society in the long run. So I, I feel really passionately about their passion. <laughs> um, so it's been, it's been really great. I, I see that as a, a good fit as far as like ideals goes, um, as far as like what I believe is important and um, upholding freedom and up, up, upholding uh, morality and ethics in our society. Wow, and I know that there'll be, you know, just to hear, I'm quite sure if the public defendants are looking, they're like, wow, because, you know, of course, we're always looking for good public defendants in this country, so uh, thank you for sharing your, uh, your passion regarding that particular, uh, uh, should I say, portion of the judicial system. Um, 
Certainly, I, I, the purpose of this uh, meeting, or should I say gathering, is just to express how I, in love I am with the idea of giving interns and our youth in this county a chance, other than just for the summer, just to sit around and do nothing. I think every student should be engaged uh, to focus on whatever their dream is. And uh, with the baby boomers, uh, as we prepare to go to the beach, I'm trying to get you all ready, <laughs> trying to get you ready. So and with that being said, you have to have an opportunity for some experience. So I'm so glad that my administration is so uh, pro uh, internship and we it carried it, what's happened is transcended throughout the entire county. Now the mayor and the city council has adopted an internship program as well. That's great. And then also the Ward and Sewer Authority has an internship program. And then the tax commissioner has an wow. internship program as well. Uh, and I just said that's just so important that we spend at least eight to ten weeks and allow our youth to just uh, find who they are or what they want to be definitely. as we go forward. Yeah, definitely. Success breeds success. Yes, it does. And Mr. and Mrs. Castro, so are you planning to go out to Southern California? I lived out there for three years. Do you want to go out and visit? To visit, for sure. Yeah, you said yep. visit. <laughs> <laughs> to visit California. Yep, for sure. After all the earthquakes are gone. <laughs> yeah, it is rocking a little bit out there, but I'm quite sure it'll probably ease up in a little bit. Tell us um, how important it is to, uh, uh, if you could just give advice to parents that are watching now um, on raising a daughter or son to take advantages uh, and for opportunities and to apply, to apply themselves for those opportunities. Oh, how important in either one you that want to speak? Uh, it's really important. First of all, I think, um, if you're really engaged with your child's life from school, from early age school, and be really active with them and always check, hey, did you finish your homework? Did you finish your homework? Mm -hmm. Is probably the most important question you can ask your child. <laughs> <laughs> she hated it, but it was good. And all through high school, I mean, even when she was in college, I would talk to her almost every day or text her. You get all your work done. It's really, really important to follow up with that. And I think you really need to be engaged with what they're doing and keep an eye on them. They say they're adults, but they're really not, and they need to be watched. <laughs> every, every, every year in high school, they would volunteer to judge at our high school debate tournament, oh, wow. and they would sit and listen to, like, like four hours of speeches um, <laughs> that were probably not very interesting to them. Um, so yeah, I mean, they were, they were really supportive. But it, it gave us an opportunity to be up in the school and I think that's really important whether they're in sports or outside curricular debate. We used to go, when we lived in Montana, we would drive um, the closest school, like we would play football teams mm -hmm. that were eight, nine, 12 hours away. And so to go that far wow. just for a two-hour football game, and Gabriella did speech and debate and choir, and we would go, you know, every opportunity we got, we would go to her debate or to her choir. And um, I think it's really important that you're engaged. Let your child know that they, that you're interested in what they're doing. And every time an yes. opportunity comes up, bring it up, talk about what? it, and. You know, you never know what your kid's going to get into. You know, what one child likes, the other child may not. That's what I was going to say. I was going to say, ex expose them. If they, if they even say, hey, you know what, I kind of like the piano, you know, go ahead and, and let them chase that for a little while. Yeah. And, um, and Gabriella has an amazing singing voice. I mean, she is, like, wow. unbelievable. Yeah. And she was, you know, national choir stuff, and uh, she's done all kinds of things. And she was on Gonzaga's choir which was amazing so wow. you never know what they're going to be really good at both my sons were excellent athletes mm -hmm. um so they the that was kind of their thing <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so uh, um so anyway the, yeah i'd say just whatever they they find some passion and try to expose them to everything and, and i do think that there's a connection um between music and math mm -hmm. i'm not sure what it is but i know there's some research around it but i would say seems like if people can learn how to play a musical instrument of some kind, mm -hmm. it helps them with math. And I don't know if it clicked your brain. I don't know math is one of <laughs> <laughs> You were good at math until you decided you didn't want to be good at math anymore. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah. That's yeah. the truth. So music and math. Music yeah. and math. Uh, okay. Well, 
this has been a great interview, and um, I am just so honored again for you being my intern and uh, so excited about your uh, your transition to Pepperdine. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting ready to uh, go into one of the top law uh, colleges in the United States, and that's nothing to sneeze at. So wanted to make sure we tout and, uh, and everybody, when I walk through the building, they say, wow, you got a Pepperdine student. They're just so excited. So you're the popular person now, <laughs> not me. I'm going, okay, sure. Yeah, so they're so happy for you. And uh, a lot of people and, and, and a lot of, um, should I say from the judicial side, would like to just sit down and chat with you. So I, I encourage you as your last couple of weeks here to make sure, I, I also you ask one thing that I'm gonna make sure it happened for you. You wanted to spend time with our uh, attorney. Uh, here for the Board of Commissioners attorney, which mm -hmm. is uh, Ken Bernard. And you want to know a little more about government law, mm -hmm. right, uh, I guess, right up front, because you're gonna be sitting up front. We're gonna actually uh, see if we can carve out some time for you to go to his office mm -hmm. and spend a day or two in his office so you can see exactly what county government is up close, you know, so you can be up close and personal with it. Well, uh, that's the end of my interview for you. Uh, anything else you would like to say or add to this conversation, Gabrielle? Yeah, I, I think that I just really need to thank you for the opportunity you've given me um, and your mentorship. It's been it's been fantastic, like better than I can put words to you almost. So thank you very much. Thank I'm you. very appreciative. We appreciate it too. You that's made her you. summer very enjoyable. <laughs> A fun summer, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know how much thank I you. love to learn, right, Mom? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. Oh, yeah. Pleasure meeting you. And Gabriella speaks highly of you about the amazing things you've done. And it's great to have a, a female role model yeah. out you. there. That's really important. That's really Thank important you. nowadays. Girl power. Girl power. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for joining this episode of Clearly. I'll see you next month.